whichever one is the best will get posted. Okay, so again, welcome. My name is Rachel Smith, the IMR coordinator. We are going to talk about 2016 triennial reporting. And so hopefully everybody can see my screen and hear me. Definitely um, let me know if you're having trouble and we'll take care of it. So the first thing um, before you file, I just have this slide here to make sure everybody's on the same page with what they need to do. Um, this is the 2016 triennial. The states require the reports every three years, so the most recent filing before this was for 2013. So you're going to collect information on mercuriatic products that were sold in the U.S. in calendar year 2016. So even though, you know, it's a three-year cycle, it's only looking at that calendar year. So you're going to gather the data for 2016, and you're going to gather the data for the U.S. Um, so basically what you want to do is get um, a product inventory of mercury products that were offered for sale. You want to calculate the total mercury by figuring out how much mercury is in one product. So either we ask you to report in milligrams or parts per million. And then you figure out how many of those products you sold in 2016 and multiply that. So if your product contains 5 milligrams and you sold 1,000, um, that would be 5,000 milligrams. Convert it to grams, you get 5 grams. So that's what you would enter as total mercury. Everything else is going to be pre-populated for you by the system. So this is really the only number that you should change for existing products. I will show you um, what to do if you have to add a brand new product. Um, or if you discontinued a product, we'll go over how to, how to discontinue that as well. But um, basically, this is the only number um, that you're going to need to input into the system. You will need to determine if you need to submit a signed senior management certification form. And so I'll also show what that looks like in a minute. Um, basically, if this is your first time filing, um, if you're a new contact for the company, if you are reporting for your boss, so your boss has to sign off on this information, you'll probably have to submit um, a senior management form. And so you can attach it at the end of your submission. There's a place for you to attach files. Or you can also send it to me via email after the fact, and I'll add it to your file. But um, basically, we just want to make sure that we have a hard copy signature on file for every new contact in the system. You also want to make sure you know your online user credentials. So that would be your username, password, and security questions. Because the security questions is what you're going to do at the end of the process before you're ready to submit the form. This is the website where you log in. Um, Again, if you're brand new contact for the company, this is the first time you're filing, you are going to need to reset your password and security questions. So um, I'll show you how to do that when we go into the system. If you have trouble, you know, contact me personally and I can, I can get you set up with the new information. Um, if you want to change your username, it's a little trickier. It, the system doesn't allow you to change your username yourself, so um, you would have to ask me and then I have our IT person. And the reason why that is a little bit different is because they don't want multiple people to have accounts associated with the same company. So um, that way we don't have two different people reporting for Honda cars and we don't know which is the right one and who, you know, so basically um, every company will have one username and one account associated with it. These are just some important reminders. Um, the 2016 triennial notification is due April 1st, so you do have some time. The reporting opened on January 1st, and I've got about 10 companies so far. So not very many, which is, you know, fine, um, but we do expect probably like 450, 500 manufacturers to submit this year. So um, that's a lot of forms to go through. The states do review them. 
so it takes time. So I encourage you to get your form in as early as possible and not wait until March 31st when, you know, 300 people are going to file that day. The sooner you get it in, um, the sooner you will get your notice of compliance. But um, as long as you make that date, you know, you should be all set. If the states have follow-up questions, um, they'll do that, but you won't be penalized um, if they have a question after, their, after that date. There's some additional webinar demonstrations coming up if you feel like you need more information. But like I said, I, I am recording this, so I will be posting it online. Um, and there's also lots of other guidance documents online and a video from last year or the last cycle in 2013. If you're not on our iMERC alert, which is an email newsletter, um, sign up by sending me an email. I assume most of you are already on this alert, which is why you're here today. But um, if you or a colleague want to be on the newsletter, you know, definitely let me know and I'll add you. And with that, I'm going to, I'm going to come back to this, um, but I, well, I'll show you now, I guess. Um, this is our e-filing system access, and this website here will have our training materials. So again, I'll show this slide at the very end, but if you need to contact me, my information is here. And right now, I will jump into the demonstration. So, um, this, if you look at the actual URL, this is our test site, um, so this is not the real URL. The URL was on the PowerPoint slides that I just showed you, um, so don't copy this down. But for this testing purposes, I'm going to go through um, a couple different types of forms and show you the different things that can go with it. Um, if you forgot your username or password, you can use this link right here. Um, basically, it asks you to enter an email address and it will um, send you a copy of your password. Now, if you try to enter your, user, your email address here and it doesn't recognize you, that's probably because I haven't updated um, the contact information for the account. So the account maybe has your predecessor's email. So in that case, this wouldn't work and you'd have to contact me personally and let me know, hey, you know, um, Jane Doe at Nomoa.org is no longer associated, so you need to update her email. And so I'll do that. I'll add, replace her contact information as yours, and then I can reset the password that way. But once you do have your um, username and password, you're going to enter it here. Log in. You'll get to this home page. Um, your My Profile page. If you click here, this is where you can update any of contact information. So um, you can update your, your title, your email, your phone number, um, and click on Save. You can also change your password. So you know, if, if I reset a password for you, it's going to be automatically generated and it's going to be a weird list of numbers and letters. You might want to change that to something you could remember. So here's where you'd update your password. And the same with your security questions. Um, if you are taking over from somebody else or if you, you know, may have forgotten your answers, you can update your security questions here. You have to answer all five. Um, move on. But once you're all settled, um, what you're going to do is click on your approved notifications. And this will show all of the notifications that you've submitted before that are associated with your account. So um, for most companies, it will be one every three years, starting in you know 2001. Um, but the most recent filing will be your 2013, and you're going to renew that so that you can file your 2016. So click on the green Renew button. So the system will um, you know, tell you, yes, you're, you're going to be doing a Mercury added product notification. You click Next. 
It fills in everything for you, a triennial notification, your manufacturer, single manufacturer. This all stays the same from your previous file, so there shouldn't be any changes here. Here's your company information. Again, um, everything is pulled over from the previous file, so unless you have some changes to make, you know, you can just do a quick look and click on Next. And then this will bring you to the product information page. So this is the main page where you're going to enter the new data for 2016. As you can see, a list of products are right here on the left-hand side in this yellow shaded column. These are the products that you reported for in 2013, and the system assumes that you're making the same ones for 2016. So um, all of this information is pre-populated. You can't change it. The only thing that is blank that you need to change is the total mercury. And this is the place where you're going to enter the mercury for um, 2016. So you enter grams. Now, um, what happens a lot is people will click on next. And you'll get a big error message. Um, and they're like, oh, wow, what's going on? I, I entered my mercury grams here. Unfortunately, the system isn't super clear. And so the error is actually um, being triggered by these other products in the list with a red exclamation point. So what the system wants you to do is before you click the next button at the bottom, click on each individual one of these products to enter your total. You can use decimal points. And then don't click next. Instead, go back up here, click on you know, the third item. If it is less than 1, you have to use a 0 for your decimal, 0 0.9. Um, say this particular product, this is a thermometer product. I don't make this anymore. Um, so it's totally discontinued. We have gotten rid of it. So what do I do here? If you've totally gotten rid of it in 2016, you know, prior to 2016 and there were no sales in 2016, what you want to do is click on the red X. There's going to be a prompt asking if you're sure you wanted to phase out or delete this product. Click OK. You enter an approximate date. Um, the date has to be before January, oh no, before um, January 1st, 2016, because if you had any during that year, even if you don't make it, Today, you made it during that calendar year, it would need to be reported on. If you don't know the exact date, you know, be conservative, use a month. I think I knew it was sometime in 2014. I'll just say December 31st. I'm not exactly sure, um, but we did discontinue it. So your reason could be that you discontinued the product line. Um, maybe you no longer have mercury, you switch to a non-mercury alternative, or you reduced the amount of mercury in the product. So um, by that I mean this thermometer is, if you can read it, it's you know between 5 and 10 milligrams. You no longer make that version. Instead, you make a thermometer that's between 0 and 5 milligrams. You still have to delete this old one and then enter the new information. So you're going to phase out this product and it disappears from your list. Now, this other thermometer product, say this company, it's continued to be offered, but they didn't sell any in 2016. You don't want to delete it from your file because it's still technically in your product inventory. So if you didn't sell any, what you're going to do is just enter zero. Save that, and look, all of your um, products have their information. You can tell because they don't have the red exclamation point, so they're all complete. You click on Next. It's going to ask you about labeling information. Now, uh, for some of you who may have been there before, this page looks a little bit different. Um, previously, we had this question, do your products have labels in accordance with local, state, or federal regulations? The answer used to be yes or no. Um, now we've kind of listed what those regulations are because I think a lot of people, you know, weren't sure and they were clicking on our website to find the information, but you know, it was 
difficult for them to go back and forth from this database to our website. So we've listed them here, and basically, um, you know, you'll be asked to check the appropriate boxes. And if you're not sure, you know, you could click 10. You don't meet one or more of the requirements, and so um, please provide compliance assistance. That means I will contact you and you know help you figure out where you might be lacking or or confirm with you that your label is, in fact, um, meet the requirements. So if you have any questions, you can use the comment box. And there's also a link to our website, which used to be on this page. But again, you know, it was just this. And I think people didn't want to have to leave to um, get the information. So it's right here. Now, um, this page is where you would add any additional documentation if you had to. So say you do have a senior management certification form. This is where you would add the file. And you can search from your computer. So you know you signed a form. Um, here we go. And you can attach it there. Same with product label. If you had um, a label that you wanted to attach or had a question about, um, you could attach it here as well. These are optional but they're, you know, quite helpful sometimes. Um, this is the summary, so if you think you made a mistake, you want to go back and, and review your information, you can click here. It will take you back to the beginning of this session, and you can, you know, double check everything. If you click on the icon, you'll see a form, um, and this is what's going to be submitted to the state. However, since this is a test, I don't know that it will actually work. So I'll wait a minute. Yeah, I guess because this is in the test system, um, the report's not being generated because or it's blank. But um, your report, if you clicked on the icon, it would have your information here. It would have all of the reporting company information, and it'd also have um, all of the product list and totals here as well. So sorry, I couldn't show you that. Um, you click on Next, and you're almost at the end. This is where you're going to um, certify that the information that you've presented is correct. Um, so if you have been doing this for several years, you are a senior management official, you would click here and enter your security question. Um, we do have the form. Let me pull it up. Whoops. Here's the, um, so here's what a senior management official is. Um, it's basically, a, you know, this is the same statement that's on the site, if you have to give it to your boss to sign off on, you would have them sign it and date it and then attach it as an addendum. So it basically just certifies that the information that you're submitting on behalf of whatever company you are is correct to the best of your knowledge. So once you've um, checked that box and determined if you need to attach, you know, if you need to go back, you can press previous and attach it um, that way. Click there and enter your security question. Again, if you forget the answer, you can go to the My Profile tab and update your security question at that point. Um, but you click on Submit. And here is your confirmation. You will also get a confirmation via email that your information has been submitted to iMark. And um, you can see your list here. So these are your archived documents, 2010, 2013, and this is your recent submittal, so 2016. Um, and then you're done. You basically wait um, until you hear from us, and you'll either you know, get a notice of approval or a question that you know, maybe more information um, is required or something like that. But you've done your submission. You've done it before the April 1, 2017 deadline, so you are good to go. So um, 
that was one form. I'm going to do a couple more just so that we can practice this and you can see how things might look different. So this is a second form here. Again, you're going to enter your password and uh, username and password. Um, if you need to update your security questions, you can, but if you think you're all set, go to Approve Notifications. There's your Renew button for 2013. Next. Um, you'll notice here, it's again, it's pre-populated. This is a LAMP form. So this form is being used by a manufacturer that creates LAMP. Um, we have four different forms. I showed you the single manufacturer today, um, and I'm going to show you the single LAMP manufacturer. The autos have a different one, and um, trade associations would, you know, they would click here, but um, they have a little bit of a different form, so I'm not going to go into those because we don't have many, but if you are from a automobile manufacturer or trade association, let me know, and if we have time today, I'll, I'll do them or else I'll set up a separate session with you. But for LAMPS is the second most common. Um, it's going to look very similar. Here's your company contact information. Change it if you need to. Here is your product list. Um, the difference here is that we do ask for the application of the LAMP and the mercury lamp wattage. And you can change this, you know, say this has now gone, you know, from 30 to 60. You can change the wattage. You can change your total. You can add in, you know, new descriptions. Sometimes people put model numbers here. Um, but it's, you know, we really don't pay too much attention to the description. It's just if it helps you. Um, but again, so this is the most important item. This is where you're going to enter your total mercury for calendar year 2016. So click there. Again, remember not to click the next button because if I do, I'm going to get an error. It's, you know, I'm missing some information. So I'm going to click down to each bulb. Oh, this is new. This is a group total. So you're not sure what that means. Basically, um, I have, this company has three fluorescent lamps. They're listed separately because they have a different mercury content, you know, 50 to 100, 5 to 10, 10 to 50. But they want to, it, it, you know, maybe it's easier for them for their inventory. They want to just present the total mercury for all of them. So they're going to combine these as a group. And so you just click on the group total. Again, group total. And, if you've done this the year before, that's why it's pre-populating like this, is because it's known that you've done it previously. Um, but if you haven't, you can do this, click on that box as well. So high pressure sodium lamp. Um, if I only have one, I'm going to enter it here. If I had several different offerings, I could combine it. And actually, I will. I'm going to add a new one. So I'm going to add a new high pressure sodium lamp. So you click Add New, Create. Um, it's, you know, you have to basically choose everything that has a red asterisk you have to fill out. So this is a, a lamp. If I want to do a description, I could, but again, I don't have to. Um, click on the applications and the wattage. It's a thousand, you know. You can do a range. You could do one number, so I could do 200, um, or you can do a range. This is a text field. And then I want to select the mercury content. So I can either do an exact amount. So say I want to do an exact, it's, you know, 500 milligrams. Um, enter 500 milligrams. And now, because I have two high-pressure sodium lamp offerings, you know, I don't have to, but I would like to do a group total. So I'm going to click that. And then this, I'm going to click this as well. I go to the next page, and my groups that are here, so fluorescent lamps is what I grouped last year. Um, it's already remembering that this is my group. I'm going to enter my group.
Do I want to add high pressure sodium? Probably not. I want to make it their own group. So I'm going to add a new one. I'm going to call it high pressure sodium and I'm going to choose the two products that go in. Now the system doesn't let you highlight both of these at the same time, so I have to do one at a time. So I'll click the first. It will create you know, the grouping. Um, this is the item in the grouping, then I can choose the second one from the drop down. So now all my products are here. I'm going to do my group total and click on next. Again, here is the um, questions, you know, to confirm labeling. So you would, you know, read these and check off what applies to you. Um, some companies would have an alternative label. So, um, you know, you know if you have one, this is what you would check if you're not sure. Click on next. If you need to attach any documents, this is where you would do it. And you're ready to go. So again, you want to um, certify that the information is correct and answer your security question. Submit. There you go. And again, you can see the status as complete submit on this date. All right, now I have one more to show you. And this is also going to be um, just a regular manufacturer, not a lamp, but I'll show you how it looks a little different. Um, so go to my approved notifications. I'm going to renew the recent one. This, again, this page might look a little bit different, and that is because this company is an importer. So the first two that we dealt with were manufacturers, meaning they were the original manufacturers of that item. Um, state law is that in addition to manufacturers, distributors, wholesalers, importers, they all have to notify as well. So by choosing your reporting company type, it helps us to avoid the double counting. And so when we conduct an analysis, we really focus on the OEMs. Um, so that's why, you know, it will that's the difference here. Um, and it tells you a little bit about what to find, a manufacturer, distributor, importer. Um, but otherwise, you know, this um, the form looks the exact same. The reporting company would be your importer's name. You're the one that's reporting the information. The manufacturer information, the system only allows you to have one manufacturer associated um, so even if you're an importer and you import from 10 manufacturers, um, you can't list all 10. So the easiest thing to do is just list yourself. Um, if you import from one, if there's, you know, if you're a company that's big, you know, the headquarters is in Japan, but you're the American version, you could put the Japan headquarters here. And so we know that, okay, that's the, you know, that's where everything's being made, and then you're importing it from them. Um, so again, it doesn't really make any difference for your report. All of this should be done for you anyway, but it's just um, we do look at it when we complete the analysis. Um, again, here's your product list. The product list looks the exact same as all you know the other manufacturer forms. Um, you're going to enter your total, go to the next item, enter your total for that, go to the next, maybe I have zero for that one, well, oh, this one's a group, maybe I no longer have this um, TV screen, so again, if I no longer sell this product, um, I stopped it, I'm going to phase it out by clicking on my red X. I stopped it in September of 2015. And now we have LED versions. So, you know, I'm just going to put that as the reason. Um, so you're going to phase it out. It erases from your form 
but on the state side and on the admin form, they will see it. And so they will see that your um, date and your reasoning for phasing out the form. That's okay, so now I have to fix my group here. These are my lamps, and they are they're already added. There's no new products. I just click next. And I'm going to double check. Okay, yeah, this looks right. All right. You know. So it will prompt you. If you don't click everything, it will say, well, you either need to click everything or you need to answer one of these, like you do not meet the requirement. Um, so maybe you don't because you have an alternative approval. So that's where you would enter that. Say, I know I need a management form. I can attach it here. So I'll say new contact because maybe I have a new boss. And then I just click on next until I get to the very end and answer my security question. And that's it. Um, so basically what I just showed you was how to um, file your 2016 if you've been in here before, if your company has an account, um, and hopefully you know, if you took over for their account, they either told you what their username and password was or, you know, t call me and then I'll change it for you um, if you can't do it yourself. If you've never filed before, this is the first time, you know, you're hearing about iMark, you will need to create a new account. So I'll show you that real quickly. And um, basically what that is going to look like is you're going to... Um, Enter information here. No. Ah. Sorry about this. I'm not going to autofill. Um, and your email. So you click on next. Um, basically this is going to go to me and I will approve your account or not. Um, most likely what I do with this information, you know, if somebody's like, oh, I need an account, they choose what they are. If you fear company already in here, chances are they already have an account. So you can still submit your request, but um, basically what I'm going to do is just overwrite your predecessor's account with your own contact name because um, we can't have two different user names associated with one account. But you can create it and so if you um, if we don't have any information from you before, you know, this is the first time, then I would approve it and um, get you can get started. But if, you know, if I don't approve it, then the reason is likely because we already have somebody in the system. So I just confirm with you that you're the new person to take over. Um, and that's pretty much it. I'll go back here to my PowerPoint. Um, this is a total, you know, um, promotion slide. We would love you to be supporting members of iMark if you're interested. Um, it would help pay for sessions like this where we can provide technical assistance. Um, we've always had state members and nonprofits, and this is the first year we opened it up to um, private businesses and, and trade associations. So if you are interested, um, let me know. These are some of the benefits. You know, you would 
participate in, in um, you know, specific webinars and discussions, conference calls with our IMARC state. Um, we do outreach and education materials, so we'd ask you for peer review, and you know, you'd have more access to the data system, prioritize, prioritization of your submittals and requests, and promotion um, of anything that you've done with, with non-Mercury alternatives. So again, if you are not a supporting member, obviously I'm still going to give you compliance assistance. I'm still going to, you know, respond to your requests and emails, um, but I think the idea would be, you know, that supporting members over time, we'd build a rapport. Um, so it's something to think about, um, and there's information on our website if you are truly interested in this. So basically, your contact for any questions for the database is me, Rachel Smith. Um, that's my email and my phone number. I am in the office on Mondays, Thursdays, and Fridays, so that's the best time to reach me on the phone. Um, Tuesdays and Wednesdays, I'm remote, so I do have access um, to email, and I can listen to my voicemail, but sometimes there might be a little bit of a delay um, since I'm working off-site those days. The website where you're going to file your report is right here, the e-filing system. This is the real one, not the test one that I showed you. Um, and then if you need any other, you know, guidance, we do have a user guide, we have frequently asked questions, and some other training materials on this website. So this is the NMOA webpage, um, because NMOA houses iMark, and so from here, you know, you can see the trainings I'm doing, um, some user guide, questions, here's a copy of the senior management form, you know, and, and the definition of what it is. Um, so again, you know, feel free to poke around our website if you have any specific questions that I, that I didn't talk about today. So that's all I have. For, for formal presentation, um, if you have any questions, you know, please use the chat box or unmute yourself. There's seven people on the call, so it's not too many. Rachel, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Oh, uh, thank you for doing this presentation. I really appreciate it. Um, I have a question on your, uh, back to the, um, you said on the application, I believe it was the general information. Um, main page product notification. If you can go through the, I wanted to ask you some. Just go through the very beginning of the application. Okay. Uh, maybe this would help some other folks. Yeah, and the next one, and the next one. I know we. All right. So dogs. because I, um, so because I submitted to... this. Okay. All right, well, first, I'm going to, don't pay attention now. I'm going to, um, I'm going to, what I have to do is I have to, send it back. So, I'll just do this real quick. So, um, this is my site. When I see that you submitted, I can, I look in here and I review it for you. Um, okay. I'm going to send this back to this person so that we can go through the form again. So sometimes if you have a question on the, you know, if, if a state or I had a question, we would send it back to you. Um, you would log back into the system here, and your report would be back under pending. So instead of submitted, it would be pending. So that's what. You know, we pretended that this person maybe made a mistake. Um, okay. So okay. This so this is the general information. Yeah. Well, now that doesn't change. That goes to the next one. Mm-hmm. Before we go any further, uh, real quick, I've I've done this before, so all my information is going to be there. My passwords are good and everything else. Do I still need to submit the? Uh, uh, I believe it's called the manager uh, notification or the. Uh, is that something? Mm -hmm. Nope. Um, the only way you would need to submit it is if it's your first time filing um, and we okay. don't have a signature on file. 
previously. The site that you're on right now, do you see where it has the mercury compound A and it has the X? And I understand that if you go to next, it's going to air out. That information should also be in our 2013, if you go back up. So if I wanted to look back at my some of my information, and is it possible for me to look back into that, to make sure I have the correct you know, mercury 50 parts per million. See, that's a, you know, below you, that's a different. <coughs> I, yep. Can I look back at that? Okay. So my next question yeah. is, go, okay, go to the next you slide. Let me show you how to do that. I mean, it would be in your submitted. Yeah. So if you yeah. go to your submitted files, you can view what you submitted in, in 2000. Um, oh, great. So you just go with a little uh, pen. Okay. And it, yeah. So it, and it has, you know, it has the list of products. So I think okay. actually, if you had a lot of products, you could print this out and then hand write it, you know, before you actually yeah. get online. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> okay, yeah, so go that's for, a, yeah, real quick. Mm -hmm. Okay, keep going on. You know, we go to 2013, go on the next one. Go to the next one. Go to the next one. Okay. Got that information. Go to the next one. Got everything filled out. We go to the next one. This one. So the labeling information. I, I heard you say yeah. that if you don't check them all, what happens? Uh, go real slow on that because I'm looking at it. Most of them I can check. If the product, if you don't check all of them, what ha what do you have to do? Try to comment or so. So say you just check one. Um, basically, the system will tell you. It's either you would check one to five. Oh, okay. And then, and then you know, um, or you could check just nine, or you could check okay. just ten. I see. Um, no, I have both. Check. I'm just saying, if you didn't have one, that you didn't check. Okay, got it. Yeah, I mean, basically, it's like one to five go together, and yeah. then um, the other ones are, you know, if the product. It, it's kind of depending on the product, um, okay. and the same with nine and ten, and sometimes. You know, people will um, check both. You know, they have they have an alternative label um, for right. some products, and then other products they have they meet. You know, so it just um, it shouldn't prevent you from filing. It's just a way to reinforce what the information is. Um, okay, let's go to the next one. See if I have anything else. Um, so yeah, you wouldn't have to submit the file. You wouldn't have to submit the management certification if you've done it before. Oh, one one last one, real quick. At the very beginning, we don't have to go back to that point. But we were talking about the uh, your password and your your login. Okay. Yep. So I saw when you first did your login. So these are pretty simple. I have mine. So it's your first login, and your password, um, and they're. Let me see if I go back to that. It, it's. Um, does, is the login case sensitive on this, or is it not? I mean, I know the password. Um, good question, or that's a good. I don't know if the login is the the password is definitely case sensitive. Yes, Let me I see if the it. login. Is. When you first put in the first one, like you had your RS Smith, and you didn't have, yeah. So that that probably isn't, and I don't think you have to have any numbers yeah. on the first. Yeah, it is. It doesn't look like the username is case sensitive, but the password okay. is. That's great, Rachel. All righty. And this is going to be recorded, the, uh, this, well, one of them that we can Yeah, I recorded this session today, um, and I have two more coming up in February. So, you know, basically I'll post one of them. I, I'll post this one today, and then, um, you know, if February turns out better, <laughs> I can, like, re, you know, I'll repost it. Like, email address that so you would just post it to the folks that are uh, that are already on your uh, webex mm -hmm. right now. Yep, yeah. I can do that. I have, um, yeah. Yeah, the only thing I'd say is that um, uh, the reason I've asked about the management uh, notification is that if I win the lottery or something, <laughs> so somebody that uh, can cover for me. So this is maybe something uh, I'll have to go through with uh, and then get their notification because I know all my passwords and everything are pretty good. But I'll, I'll go over that. So. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's basically it's it's for the new the staff turnover. Yeah. So if anybody else has any questions, Rachel, thank you very much. It's been very, very. Oh yeah. No problem. And thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Great. Um, so does anybody else have any questions?
I think like once you're in the system, um, you know, if you are lost, um, take a screenshot or something, send it to me via email. People have done that before. So they've, you know, gone to enter their stuff and they're running into an error. Um, call me or email me, but a screenshot is something sometimes really helpful because then I can say, oh, look, there's a red exclamation point next to the product. You, that's what tripped the error. You have to either update that total or, or phase out that product or something. So th that's the most common um, error, I would say. And then forgetting your security questions is probably the other most common um, problem people you know, forget what they might have written um, three years ago, you know, for most people. So. Okay, well, um, I'm going to stop recording, but if anybody has any more questions, they'll stay on the line or, you know, feel free to leave. Thanks for coming.